yeah, I remembered to click the right thing in uh, Streamlabs. So I was like, nope. That I did. One. I was watching that. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I was waiting to click the wrong thing and have to do a shitty transition. Um, hello, human being viewers, alien viewers, dog cat viewers. Uh, this is Spoiler Room. It's the second one that we've ever done. It's for Marvel's Avengers. We've all been playing it in the last three weeks, month. Um, and we've all finished the story. So we thought we'd get together, have a bit of a conversation. We've steered away from talking about the actual conversation too much you know among ourselves around the the story and what we thought of it we've had little yeah i like this bit this was okay but let's get quite deep with daniel the the marvel man of us and Chun, uh, we're all a bunch of we're all a bunch of marvel fanboys we did spider-man spoiler room now we're doing avengers like we, we are just... but it's, it's more you're very Marvel affiliated, Chunt's very DC affiliated, and I just sit on the fence and like superheroes. So, um, I mean, fuck's sake, you've got like Thor posters and shit behind you. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that Although, is true. That was a present. But yeah, I, I know, I got my, I'm literally wearing a DC shirt right now. So that didn't work. Yeah, I know you also <laughs> just work. like superheroes, but we all have to come from points of view, right? Speaking of which, um, my wife bought us an impossible puzzle. It's called The Impossible Puzzle, mm -hmm. and it's a Marvel one, and it has every single Marvel character in this thousand-piece puzzle. And we built the frame Jesus. out of it last night, and it was a pain in the dick. <laughs> it, it is <laughs> When they say impossible, it's impossible because you can't see half of the picture because it's covered up with fucking branding. It's like, it's like oh, this is this name. It's, it's ridiculous. But we got the frame built. Um, speaking, of, speaking of impossible puzzles, creating this game... <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly right um but no it was on, on marvel brand so that will that will sit behind me somewhere over there i need to rearrange my panels when we've we've done it i'll frame it, nice. and put it up. Um, sounds good how are we boys anyway it's only been like 24 hours since we spoke to each other but um but you know thought, thought we'd check in man in the middle how's it going <clears throat> yeah i'm just trying not to choke on the fastest bowl of pasta i've ever eaten rushing in to do this <laughs> it's it like, it was short yep. notice, but, you know, as as I allude to a lot, when you have babies knocking around, you've got to just take every moment you can. So oh, it's yeah. like, Avengers, Otherwise... assemble. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty much. Otherwise, I'm fine. I'm just fine watching... I need to remember um, that to point out when we actually do get into the conversation. That was my favorite part of the whole game. Um, Dan, the stats man over there on the left, how are you doing? Are you having a good day? good a lot of adulting today it's really weird because while i was um cleaning the house i was i had to listen back to our our podcast that just went up today and then i was listening to some chunt casts and i'm like it feels like i've just been speaking to you guys for the last two hours <laughs> <laughs> Media you're, bored, so you're, you're bored of us already basically <laughs> i've got you have nothing left to say i know it all <laughs> right so avengers we all played we all played on pc we will not go into any PC shenanigans because Dan's uh, adamant that it's his computer's fault that his game kept being his game, but it's not. It's Square Enix's fault for rushing and hash jobbing a product together. Uh, people are having those issues everywhere, but we'll save the issues for later on. I think the best place for us to start really is the story beats. Um, I, for one, thought it went in a completely different direction to what I was expecting, and the story was far stronger than I was expecting. Um, from the beta, my impression was that Kamala Khan was going to annoy the hell out of me, um, and I actually think she—it's—it's it's a Kamala Khan game. Let's be honest; it's—it's it, it's her game, yeah, absolutely. Um, and she was really strong. It was she was funny at times. It actually did work. The performance was excellent, um, and yeah, kind of high level. I was very impressed with the performances and story all round. So, do you guys have like a high level take before we get into the nitty gritty? Chunt, what was your kind of high level thoughts? Yeah, look, uh, from the story side, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, look, I really enjoyed the world that they built uh, from what we saw of it, at least, um, which is a negative that I have that we'll go into. Um, look, the, the character characters uh, hit and miss very much so, <laughs> I felt. Um, <clears throat> some of it felt very lived in, and I was like, wow, that, that was really cool. Like, I felt like um, this is like an established thing. Uh, which I really enjoyed that, and yeah, I, I agree with Kamala Khan. Like I've, <clears throat> I've been a bit of a negative Nancy about Kamala Khan from Marvel Comics. Like they just keep pushing this new character using an old character's name, like a new mantle. But it's a sorry, it's an old old mantle that was Captain Marvel's, 
<clears throat> and uh, this new character's come in with her logo, you know, and it's just weird stretchy powers. And I'm like, really? Uh, you know, like it's just, well, if you're going to bring in a new character, give it its own name, own mantle, and all that kind of stuff. But now that I've seen it play out, um, in some respects, like they do kind of mirror the origin somewhat of Kamala Khan from the comics. And I get it. And it's, it's almost Billy Batson esque, like looking up to, like Billy Batson's like a Superman, like, oh, wow, you know, this is cool. I want to be just like Superman. <clears throat> and then he becomes one, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's, it's a similar kind of um, story like that. And she's like us, like she's our eyes to the Avengers. And I'll just, I'm going to say straight up before we move on, <clears throat> my last point on the high level, the high level part that really got me was A Day and two particular parts was her interaction with Thor, which I thought was just fucking awesome. <laughs> but mm-hmm. well, I actually got a bit like, oh, that, that was just, that was awesome. I felt it. And then when, she, when Captain America came in mm-hmm. and that whole part back and forth, I was like, oh, like, after she just said his quote about, you know, planting your feet and tell them the move, like yeah. that whole quote, I was like, oh, I, I actually went a bit like, goosebumps and like choked up a bit that's so fucking cool when he just walks in you know after that oh like that that was my high point of the game (laughs) yeah Uh, my mind um, i just had just before like the uh, whole avengers assemble thing when she stood there and she's like you're not gonna say it (laughs) Uh, it was absolute because they don't they don't say it but it's just the fact that she stood there and she's like wink wink nudge nudge like you gonna say it now and they just all look at her and it's just yeah. it was, that was um that i full laughed out loud so dan what's your what's your um high level takeaway and yeah a, a, a favorite line in the in the game yeah it's uh it's definitely a kamala game i i think right it's hard with this game because as soon as i go to say something good i want to say but they didn't do this so um I think with most of the characters, they got really right. I liked the world that they built. Like it felt, it felt lived in, and but the, it also felt very personal. Like there wasn't a lot of like big bombastic stuff, really. Like a lot of it was just interactions between characters, and I kind of could have done more with that. But um, I think a lot of the interactions they got right. Um, yeah, we'll talk about we can talk about each of the characters a little bit later, but I think it's how, how the interactions with the characters, how actual small the story was. Um, and then, and then they had some pretty cool set pieces. So yeah. And any, any particular line that got you in terms of giggles or feels? Uh, yeah. Chun stuff like going through as yeah, at the start, going through as the fan was like, it just put a massive grin on my face. Like, just being like, oh my god, I would so be doing the same thing as this kid. I, uh, I'm... Yeah, we'll get we'll get more into the characters. In a bit. <laughs> they're all expanded like... upon, but yeah, Kamala is the 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 standout, and especially that voice uh, actress. Um, yeah, I hope she gets a lot more stuff from this. Yeah, she she was very good. Um, so that's kind of high level what we want to talk about so this show is called spoiler room if you haven't played it and you don't want things spoiling then yeah leave now i mean we've spoiled some stuff already but it's in the title for god's sake so um <laughs> yeah you know where the door is um let's go with full story spoilers then we'll start start at the beginning so a day happens um as we've alluded to that's kind of kamala's origin you know she sees a day happen she gets infected um by what what even is it that infects her it's what's the two <clears throat> oh, mists. that's the one yeah, ter- um, ter- so mist. she's um she's basically mutinized and her powers is stretchy arms and legs and body in general she's just a big big stretchy stretches um so she's got that and kind of you know the avengers are outlawed and you know nobody's seen or heard from them they're all going to living in um squalor in some cases uh tony stark but it's very it's very atypical of um of an avengers story you know oh avengers did something bad now we all hate the avengers and oh they're all going to run away and hide on different parts of the planet and um you know despair sets in 
Um, so we get to kind of that point. The point of the story is to reunite the Avengers. I think the mission's even called Reunite, isn't it? Or the, like the main campaign. Um, or reassemble mm. is what it's is what it's called. Yeah. So as Kamala, kind of you you drive through that, you bring together the Avengers kind of one by one. Um we'll kind of take it in phases as, as what you do there. So she starts with Bruce Banner, um the the incredible Hulk who finds her, you know, on the the um it's not on the Quinjet, is it? It's on the main thingy base. <laughs> crashed. Um, yeah that, oh, so Hulk time now. Uh, yeah, Hulk's hiding Chimera, out there, yeah. and he wants to um, he wants to smash as soon as he sees her, um, and not in that kind of way. <laughs> 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 I realised yeah. what I was saying as the words were coming out of my mouth. <laughs> oh um, boy! But no, in a, in 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 nice Kamala fashion, she she talks him down, and um, and that's kind of the first relationship that she builds. So, what's what what were your feelings on not only the relationship between? um bruce and kamala but the um you know that that part that phase of the game if you like because it's very much act one you know if you t- treat a day as the prologue and that's very much uh act one of the game dan you can go first like what were your, your thoughts on the kamala bruce stuff and just that portion of the the story in general yeah well it was interesting going because we all played the beta so we all played that bridge section uh, so when getting into that, we were just like, all right, let's let's just get through. But it felt more, it felt a lot better paced having all, all the Kamala stuff before it, because then you're like, all right, let's get into it. Um, meeting up with Bruce, uh, Bruce was interesting in this because um, what they did with Banner and Hulk is they managed to get around the thing that I tend to get annoyed about watching the Hulk because one of the crappy things about the character is that he is a character that is constantly not trying to be the superhero that you've come to see. So he's always, in most stories, he's been a try not to let the Hulk out and um, and you want to see the Hulk. So there's this constant like disconnect between audience member and character on screen. Whereas here, they already have this, understanding like Hulk and Banner already have this understanding between each other. Uh, so Hulk will stay Hulk for a while and come out of it. And then Banner will, Banner can be Banner for a while. And they both have this understanding. So it means you're not getting stripped of being able to be the Hulk. And you're also getting conversations between Banner and Kamala, which are really good. Uh, I think I, I do wish Banner wasn't, as much of a downer as is through pretty much 95% of this whole story. <laughs> um, I wish he had a little bit more levity to him, even when a couple of other characters come on the team, like even when other characters keep rocking up, he's still, he's still sour. And I, and I would get it if people were sour towards him, but he's still sour towards pretty much all of them. And he's the one that kind of out of them and said that they're dangerous and that's what ruled them against it. Um, one other thing I want to point out is that uh, it's interesting just in terms of timing that this game was, was announced at least in you know 2017 and before the, and at that time there was no like uh, the Fox deal and everything with um, Disney and, and that hadn't happened yet. Uh, and the way that they had changed the Inhumans in this game um, basically turning them into a type of X-Men, um, whereas in the comics, it's more that they're, they're the experience of being refugees. So the idea in the comics is that the Inhumans are all, the, they're human, but they're all um, take, they're taken to the moon and uh, they get experimented with the Terrigen Mists and they, and they either become human, uh, become an Inhuman or they die and then eventually they're driven from their home on the moon and they come to come to our world and they're essentially refugees living among among us. Whereas this is more your X-Men type, which is their outcast, uh, you know, uh, people are on the hunt for them type thing. So they changed it a little bit and I get why they did it. Um, but it, it was just an interesting choice that they it was, it, it also kind of fit into, to, um, 
Crystal Dynamics setting up their own Avengers world. And have you, you any, uh, anything to add? Yeah, the whole first part, like, it's, it, it's like every game starts off a bit slow. <laughs> you know, it, you got to get through Kamala and then you've, you finally take control of the Hulk and goddamn, it was such a lot of fun. That whole lead up to where you find Hulk, <laughs> I, I thought that was awesome. Like, just, you find this Chimera fallen shield carrier and you, you skulk him through it. Um, and Hulk's pursuing you, <laughs> you know, like he's some intruder. I was like, fuck, this is so rad, man. And I was like, oh, he's going to kick my ass. <laughs> and, um, and he finally catches up to you and he just wants Cap's shield back, <laughs> you know, and leaves you alone. But I think he, um, the point where she gets big enough to punch him in the face or chest or whatever to be like, to defend herself. And he kind of stood back. He's like, oh, <laughs> all right. And just took the shield and bug it off, you know. Not and, fucking uh, with that. Yeah, yeah, and I, was, I thought that was a pretty cool moment because he could easily take her, but it was just like, well, you know, cool. Uh, didn't Crazy. expect to get, yeah, didn't get, didn't expect that kind of thing. But yeah, that whole sequence is awesome. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I agree. Like Bruce Banner, he's always, he's always a bit of a downer in the comics. Like it's, it's two character. I, I just feel that, um, what's his name, Troy Baker? I think he played him, mm. played him a bit too, uh, like. He played him a bit too serious, like a bit melodramatic. I felt it's like everything he's saying is like too much weight to it, like uh, like too serious, almost daytime TV series. I was like, come on, man! You know, every time he's talking to Kamala Khan or someone, everything he's trying to get across and convey he needs to have some kind of you know really heavy level, uh, like heavy meaning to it. You know, very serious. And it's like, come on, man! Like, I don't, I just didn't like it. I got enough of it. And that's part of the the aspect of the characterizations I had issues with overall. Like um, Nolan North, uh, Tony Stark, to me should have been like gold, but I hated it. <laughs> I just I didn't buy it at all. I found it um, uh, not that I'm like stuck on Robert Downey Jr.'s one because he's existed for years before he came along in the comics and in cartoons. So I've, it's not like he's the only Tony Stark voice I've ever heard, but. Um, I've had better, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, all I heard was, um, Nathan Drake, you know? And, uh, I was like, all right, come on. Like, you've got more to you than that. Really? Don't you? I, I don't know. I just, I didn't really enjoy it. It might've been a script issue. I, I don't know. Or just a direction problem. He's a talented voice actor, but, um, yeah, it just didn't strike to me. Um, what's his name? I can't remember the guy's name. who did Captain America. Uh, but I really liked that. It, I, I felt some Chris Evans in there. And it was intentional, like it had to be, because there were some moments I was like, damn, that's a good impression, <laughs> you know, um, which I would have liked. Those, something else. But that's yeah, the characters jumping, as, as the story goes. Probably yeah. jumping the gun, but yeah, yeah, that whole first Hulk and Kamala Khan thing. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I already played it in the beta. So, but the cinematic stuff, I was like, all right, that, that was good. So the, um, the next kind of Avenger we meet as we progress through the story is we have to you know, as you said, that Bruce is being moody emo Bruce, and it's like, oh, if we need to progress further, we're going to need Tony. Um, so we go on the hunt for for Tony Stark, and we find him. And um, I agree with you, Chun. So that again, I don't. I, I want to just focus on story in this first part before we then obviously discuss, you know, the villain, the combat style, and start talking more about the game mechanics. But um, mechanically, Iron Man has wound up being one of my favorite characters to play but the performance is shocking it's the it's the weakest and as you said like for such a talented voice actor is that's a shame um don't get it, i think it, there's an element of i think i think there is an element of this isn't robbie robert downey jr for me um and it's trying too hard to maybe be robert downey jr i know that iron man is always that sarcastic and that kind of he's got that bravado but um, it felt like a poor imitation. Um, and just in general, I'm sick of Troy Baker and Nolan Noll having all of all of the characters. Like, why do they get to be mm. everyone? Yes, they're talented, but there's other talented people. Um, I think, it, yeah, it was, it was very weak. Um, that part of the story was quite cool. Um, you know, him hiding out in a caravan and just <laughs> just living yeah. his uh, living his worst life randomly in his parents' old um, 
what would you call it manner did they, is that what they refer it to the stark manner um you know yeah, just to go so, yeah. full batman um and he's hiding out in a caravan there kind of building prototype tech for no reason uh, which obviously comes to his rescue um i thought the mission there was really cool when you first get to be iron man you're literally just wearing like a glove and some shoes <laughs> and you're just floating around yeah. in the sky like that was like this is pretty genius i've not experienced this before um but yeah the the quips and the dialogue um started to take it t- take me out of the experience a little bit um but it, it was a pretty cool mission down of you any particular thoughts around the kind of iron man section yeah i i liked i did like that mission too like gra- like yeah grabbing little bits of armor here and there going through um it, it was weird hearing him obviously being a, a huge fan of um the uncharted games and knowing N- nolan's voice so much um at this point it was like nathan drake adjacent so the humor that comes from nathan drake in those uncharted games is more like situational but so it's like it's like oh man what's happening now whereas this was this was like if nathan drake just did quips all the time and there it was a little off i wouldn't say it was the weakest i got some other uh nominees for that uh that award but um he kind of it was just kind of middling in the in the end and a, a lot of the jokes i think uh and quips that were later on in the story were prob- probably were were funny but yeah the fact that i understand why they got all the big voice actors for each of these roles but then you end up just hearing those voice actors that you've seen all the time and mm-hmm. i kind of wish they just went with um unknown more unknown people but no, I like that point. Um, it was in, it was interesting having Banner and Stark as the ones that, that first meet, and then uh, slowly they're not in it as much together because um, other characters interact more. Um, there's some interesting pairings that pop up throughout this story, which I which I appreciate. But yeah, that that was a good mission. I like that mission. I was on Tony's side. <clears throat> How he's pissed off with Bruce, you know. Mm. It's like you asshole, you sold us out, you know. And I was like, "Yeah, you did, you dickhead." Like you should have just sucked it up, and Avengers will come up with a solution or something, you know. Not just be like, "All right, government, yeah, I'm going to sell our whole team out." So Bruce is like, "Screw everything." Uh, sorry, uh, Tony's like, "Screw everything. I'm just going to hide." You know, I've had enough of this shit, and um, you know, I expected to find him in the manor. And then I laughed when we found him in the caravan i was like okay that makes sense i should have seen that coming you know oh he's just chilling out like jamie said and i laughed when he's like i'm going down here now i'm gonna get my suit and that whole sequence was great like i i didn't see that coming so that was that was a pleasant surprise like i that whole part of tony stark was great but then the rest of it was like subpar you know um but yeah you know whatever it is what it is move it along yeah so after we've after we've got tony um, we go go around and do some more generic missions. Um, those were the parts that weren't very memorable. Um, they're all very same, same. Um, so, a lot of generic missions. Such, such as a looter shooter usually would have. Um, who was next? That's how uh, memorable it is. Yeah, Black Widow. Black yeah. Widow is next. Is it Widow? But yeah, she I was, thought it was Widow. Yeah, she she's, was a little um, later. She's actually in it right from the start. Um Mm. but it's revealed that it is it is black widow that's um helping you out as tiny dancer um i quite like that uh, tony stark's best yep. interaction for me in that whole game was when he is given a shit for calling herself tiny dancer and the whole that yo mm. you what would you have gone with rocket let me guess rocket man like that that was some good interaction yeah um who callback that's how jokes work it's a callback yeah yeah <laughs> it was um who was playing black widow was it Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey, I thought it was, yeah. But again, like, you're so used to hearing her and everything. Like, those three voice actors are just in 95% of AAA video games uh, yeah. is mm. those three. And um, again, you could kind of tell it was her. I thought her performance was good. It wasn't exceptional. It was passable. Um, she felt very Black Widow. Um, but again, for me, that Dan, I don't know if there's some merit to what you were saying, you know, about the whole, the way the Inhumans were trapped because of the, the deal with Disney and Fox, et cetera. Um, mm. I don't know if something was holding them back from just trying to use 
the voice actors from the MCU. This game would have been tret so I, I think it had got a much better reception had it have done that. I get why it didn't, do you know what I mean? But I, I'm just not sure of some of the properties that they maybe want to visit or use kind of where they were sat because obviously it's going to be a, an evolving world, but that's a separate conversation. Um, so yeah, Black Widow was fun. I think her combat's one of the strongest as well. Um, I quite like the up close in your face kind of brawler-esque style that she has. Um, the, the guns are actually quite fun. The gu the, the gunplay is, is, is neat as Black Widow. Um, Story-wise, I don't feel like she really plays into too much. Do you know what I mean? Like she's not... She's not like a other than the whole tiny dancer part, which I think is her contribution to the to the main story. Um, she kind of just fades away into the background after we meet her, and she is she has a couple of missions. Um, and then I, I think we hit about the the halfway point there. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts on Black Widow before we kind of touch on that point? That whole mission, fucking hell, man! When you're going through that. Um aimbot complex thing factory yeah. fucking mm. christ i hated it it was brutal man you get, you get so your ass handed to you a good bit yeah at, at that point of the game i'm like what the fuck is this shit like you just all of the animations are so slow like she's great the players and the, part of my gripes of the game is like the animations take so long and you get knocked out of them while you're like halfway through trying to hit someone or charge mm. up an attack or or whatever and that that whole part was all of that where you're trying to do stuff and you're so low leveled you've unlocked fuck all because you only just got the character and um yeah i, I was so close to rage quitting a couple times like this is just dumb I'm not having fun here at all like i was <laughs> you know and i feel like i'm yeah. doing what i'm supposed to be doing but this game isn't letting me but yeah that, that whole part whatever i was i enjoyed the story elements so like i was like all right unlocking the secrets and figuring shit out and getting more context of stuff and the whole Monica thing. And, you know, um, but you know, I could have done without it. It didn't really add much really. It, it just kind of gave more context to aim and Monica or Monica, whatever her name is. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't mind her story part in that. My thing is, is when she wasn't in casual mode, when she was in serious mode, it was like a, it was like, one tone like it was like just one emotion the entire time which just really weird and once again because i just came off playing like the last of us part two where she's just abby in that and i'm like oh wow you went you went from that to this and it's a what like it's a huge departure because you're just coming in in here saying some lines and then moving on um it was really weird with that section because at the very start i kept dying a lot because Black Widow doesn't have many defensive capabilities except for going invisible. So I, I, I am constantly just trying to get away from some people to give myself some space. And I just kept dying. Eventually I got used to it. And then you have that boss battle, like on top of the, um, on top of all the shipping crates and everything. And it just kept going and going and going. And I was like, I don't mind this but I was kind of getting used to the other characters and I think I'm, we'll, we'll keep talking about them, but I think there's this weird disconnect where I, I like the idea of getting the band back together, but the times in which you are getting these characters and having time to spend with learning them is not, it felt way out of whack for me, but um, yeah. yeah, it was interesting how her, how Black Widow, coming into it and what's happening with Kamala during that whole section too, trying to figure out who she is. That's more interesting, but that's only like a small portion of a big section of um, Black Widow's part in the story. Yeah. And I think all of the, as we said, like most of the parts of the story do thread through Kamala. You'll play a couple of missions as mm -hmm. someone and then have another Kamala one. And then it's kind of back into, into the next phases. So this is for me where it felt like we hit kind of the midpoint of the game. Um, you kind of had that kind of, end of act one start of act two kind of set piece um and you know there's what are they what is it the aim are tanking into the into the city um and you know obviously thor's gonna pop up then super weird introduction i think that could have been handled a lot better he just rocks up in a t-shirt and which is funny that he's just there in t-shirt and jeans that says what is it what hi my name is what's his name on his thing zach or something Donald blake 
Blake, yeah, that's Dr. Donald Blake. Blake. Yeah, because that's from a um from a comic, right? The the whole Donald Blake yeah. thing. Yeah. And but he stood there and then, you know, he just calls his hammer back from the monument that's wherever A Day memorial thing is. Um and then Thor's just here. And it's like, oh, Nice to see you, Thor. I know that that happened, you know, in in other mediums where Thor just rocks up because he's a god. He can, but I'd have preferred it if he there was a reason to call him, say, back from Asgard or something, or you know, the team had to go and get Thor. He's the most interesting character for them to go and get. They could have built a whole off off world piece and gone to Asgard, like. But again, I get that would have been a hell of a lot of work considering the kind of repetitive nature of this game and the the assets and art direction that had already been used it'd almost be building another third onto what they'd already done by having asgard um so he it felt the weird thing, although i do think in terms of performance and story um he doesn't play into the story at all um he's just a super powerful avenger he's just he's just there um but performance wise it was one of the best i was expecting thought was my favorite i was expecting to really dislike him but the, he nailed um that and dan do you know who the voice actor for Thor was. I'm not sure. Joe DiMaggio, chance That's man. Oh, it's your boy from Gears, right? Was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bullshit, Mr. Really? Phoenix himself. Yeah, Marcus. Oh, him. <laughs> wow, well, I didn't pick that at all. Fuck. No, God, he's to die. I was like, he's done a really good kind of pseudo English accent. Yeah. That's that's quite a uh, quite decent. Um, so, so to so go yeah, on from he's... what you were saying, like with with his introduction, um, they're kind of. It's kind of annoying because his introduction, which later on when we get down the story, where he rocks up the second time um, to yeah. see the, to see uh, Stark and Cap, that would have been an awesome introduction for him to yeah. come back at that point. Yeah. Why, I don't know why he needed to be in that point because as, as you're about to continue on, we end up getting Thor and Cap at the same time in terms of being able to play as them not in the story, but to be able to go do side missions, you get them at exactly the same time. Yeah, it's very strange. Um, and kind of, as, as we, yeah, massive spoiler, huge spoiler, not really, because he's in all the friggin' marketing. But then we go on the the big old mission to, uh, well, we have to rebuild the suits Ace. first and get and get Tony's um, moon outfit, basically, so we can fly to space. Um, and he goes and fetches Cat back. Um, that was fun. It was a great mission. I think that it was the strongest mission in the game, I think, for me. Um, the whole moon base thing. Um, and the parkour, when you get Cap and you first start playing as him, I thought that was awesome. That was really, really... It, he felt good to play, like, running across walls and stuff. Um, and instantly I was like, yeah, I can play a lot of this. I'd take a full game of just this Captain, Me Captain America mechanics. Um, so, yeah, we get Cap back, you know... Then we go fight the big bad as you would. I think I agree with Chunt. Captain America's performance was was one of the best for sure. Um, like th similar to Thor, it it walked that tightrope of being. This feels familiar in terms of what I know of the MCU, but it's got its own spin. Whereas I feel like, as I said, round Iron Man, it was just trying to imitate MCU Iron Man, and you know a little bit the same with Black Widow as well. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed Cap. I enjoyed the story beats that Cap had. Um, you know, kind of being that oh, we've got the we've got the captain back. Uh, we've you know now we can go take on the big bad. I mean, I don't know why they needed him that badly to to be honest. Um, when you think about how the last mission plays out, you know, Cap doesn't really do that much. <laughs> it's not it's not like it's just Captain America that takes. It's the whole team. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's um, it was it was a strong end. Um. You know, it very quickly progresses to the end after Captain America is kind of brought back. There's a red herring thrown in there because it's like, you know, once you've got him and it's like, oh, we need to actually go find all of these things to build the armor to, you know, be able to go take on the big bad, the Stark tech armor. Um, It's like, right, so they've done that looter shooter thing now whereby they've got us to a point in the game. Your ticker over in the corner says that you're 58% through or something. And you're like, right, now I'm going to have to do loot a shooter bullshit to open the last 15% of the story. But that's not actually what happens. Um, I got all of that equipment in two missions, I think. I did the Captain America quest after you just got him, you know, to go play as Cap for a while. 
um, played a second one and I had all of the bits and they were like, oh, let's go build this armor and go take on, take on MODOK. So last mission was okay, but in terms of story beats, I think it sets up the future. Um, I think that was the intent of the last mission, you know, um, Modok wasn't really the villain, which we'll talk about kind of the baddies uh, just after you guys give your thoughts on the, the end of the game. But for me, it was a it was a satisfactory ending. Um, it very much feels like act one of a much, much, much larger plan that they have. Um, and I can only hope that this storytelling prowess carries on throughout the life cycle of this game because it'll give me reasons to go back to it. Um, because at the moment... Uh, you know mechanically combat way it's not got me in that loop but the story if they release a a three hour part to this i'd pay for it do you know what i mean i'd pay for it. if that was an expansion i know that they're saying all the characters are free and stuff but if there's an expansion and it's a story expansion i'd treat this very much how you treat destiny chunt and just come back and, and and do that so that's kind of my thoughts on where the story finishes up what about you dan how do you how do you feel it kind of crescendoed well, I actually want to point out that um, I actually think, well, one, I want to correct myself uh, about Thor because oh, I was wrong uh, about that. It's actually Travis Willingham that is voicing Thor. Oh. Uh, but I, I swear that, yeah, anyway, Travis Willingham is voicing Thor, so I want to correct that before anyone writes out in comments or anything like that. Okay. Um, I actually thought Cap, wasn't as engaging um, as I thought he would be. He just didn't sound like a guy, like, and it's hard because you're not trying to compare it to like Chris Evans of the Avengers movies, right? But he didn't sound like a guy that was a four-foot scrawny kid and became like a, this muscular dude. He sounded like he was always like the, you know, the quarterback of the high school team or something. Um, there was something yeah, about him, which didn't exert. I, I, I was this weak scrawny guy. And now, now I have this power that I need to, to deal with. So that didn't come across. I, I liked how they used him in the story in terms of how he, his connection to MODOK and how they were using caps blood to, or she was the Monica chick was using caps blood to, keep Murdoch alive. Uh, so I actually didn't mind that, but my, one of my problems was as much as I love them getting the team together and everything, it took way too long. But I, I would have wanted all these characters and well, still introduce them one by one, but I would have wanted them for four hours before actually getting through to the last mission. Because you just don't have you just don't have enough time. Uh, even if and I I did a lot a lot of side stuff, um, especially when that glitch was happening because I couldn't do anything else. So I just went around as Iron Man. Um, I think Iron Man was probably my favorite in the end, followed by Thor. Um, Cap, I I was worried that Cap and Black Widow would actually be too close together. Uh, getting towards the end because the hard thing about these characters is the the base level that you get some might be really good at the start and then it doesn't really add much later on whereas like iron man does not feel great at the start and as you level him up he becomes so much better so um but when you get cap like when i'm running around as cap in that final mission i'm like i have got like no skill abilities upgraded here. Like I am running on bare bones and it's just not even fair. If, if I could just have like Iron Man or Kamala from the, who I've had since the very beginning, mm. um, it'd be so much more enjoyable. I agree. Um, so that's kind of story beats touch then guys. I think th before we kind of move past that, let's chat about the villains. So Modok and aim are the big bad, um, although yep. Monica is clearly the ringleader of the big bad. Um, I thought her performance throughout was fantastic, actually. I thought she was quite strong yeah. um, in terms of her motive delivery. Um, and I'm glad that she's still present. So the post credit scene um, is 
is you know she's still alive and well and planning something even more devious um so you know modok actually is relegated to a bit of a sub villain and um, when you think kind of the market and everything around it kind of was pointing to modok being the big bad um pretty throwaway for me to be perfectly honest i felt like a very throwaway villain um had one good scene i think and that was where he was putting monica in her place and was like just like remember like what you've made me um that was quite a strong strong scene but other than that i i really i've no not no memory do you know what i mean it's not like i've gone that was a memorable villain um very 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 throwaway she was the standout for me and yeah i'm glad to see that she's going to kind of be present going forward what about you guys chunt do you want to leave this one yeah modok I, I was pretty disappointed with like i felt a bit more sympathetic towards him <laughs> throughout yeah. the, the story beats where i was like oh this poor guy like, he's got that just doesn't sound like he's got any idea what's happening to him and it's just happening and he gets a bigger and bigger head i was he's disappointed i wanted him yeah, he's an experiment like a puppet but then he turns the tables, like he flips the script on her, which I thought was cool. But I wanted him to have the big Modoc chair where he's like all encompassed. Like it's just him and like you just see his face, the big face and his legs hanging out with all the powers and shit. Like, but he was just a giant head in a, in a floating seat. Uh, but I wanted the whole capsule chair thing that he had going on, but whatever. But um, yeah, look, overall, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. Actually, like AM is a, is a good threat in the Marvel Universe and... Modok was introduced in the comics as an Avengers level threat uh, back way back when. Um, so that, that was pretty cool. But yeah, I, I just don't think he was um, built to be the threat as he could have been in this game. But um, the whole Monica um, thing threw me off. I, I got it at the end, but the whole time I was like, well, oh, what is her purpose? Like, what is she doing besides using him as an experiment? And, um, you know, stealing inhumans' abilities and testing them and, you know, all, all that whatever science stuff that she does and the, the evil science genius thing happening, uh, moustache twirling, like, muhaha stuff that she's getting up to behind the scenes. Um, but it turns out that, uh, we'll just jump to it, that she's, like, the one that we've been seeing the whole time is a clone. And... You see at the end in the uh, post credit scene where it starts off with these three containers and there's two monikers in them uh, and their eye colors are different and there's one that's empty, which is the one that Modok killed by injecting her with whatever the serum was. And then you've got the, the master moniker <laughs> sitting there at the table like, Muhaha, now we do our next thing, hee <laughs> hee. You know, and her eye colors are um, bright green or whatever they are and the, the moniker that we've seen the whole time has had um, dark eyes, like brown eyes. So there was a bit of like a misdirection happening. I'm like, oh, well, okay. So that moniker we've been dealing with the whole time wasn't the real one. So, you know, how how deep does this mystery go? Weird. Yeah. Um, but before that happens, like just the, the whole Modoc fight afterwards, you, you, have, you get treated to some you know, spectacle fight with a, a Kree sentry. And um, that was like, yeah. what? Like, when did that happen? And <laughs> what was that? And like, this whole thing, the whole way through, is Captain America saying, "There's something at the bottom of the the bay underwater that was going to come out, and I I had to drop the ship on top of it to stop it." And he didn't tell anyone that the whole time. It, like, everybody asked him, like, "So why did you break the thing?" And he's like, "I had to because X." But the X that he said was about some earthquake that might have happened, so I wanted to stop it. But he never said that he knew anything about there was a Cree sentry underwater that was going to take... I don't think what... he knew. Yeah, I was just like, well, what? none of that made sense. Like, there's this big plot hole of like, well, did he know that? And was that the reason he dropped it? Or was he just trying to stop the thing? And it was just a happy coincidence that he, he was like, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I knew that century was underwater and it was trying yeah. to take our engine thing. Yeah, uh, I didn't I, understand any of that. None of that I connected. With, I agree with Dan on that part. I, th I think he knew there was something, but I don't think he knew it was that. I think he knew that there had to be something stopped from coming up, but I don't think he knew it was the, the Kree soldier, so... There was something interacting... There was something interacting with the ship that was bringing itself up and so mm. he destroyed the ship to get it to stop that was his that was his the, plan the logic but um yeah to move on to motor i i actually didn't 
I didn't mind Murdoch. I thought the way they brought him to life, essentially, was actually really impressive to do Modoc on screen. Like I like that is such a hard character to to put in a semi realistic world. Uh but the I think the problem was is that the scenes that he had between the cuts from the Avengers, it's like you replayed it's like they replayed the same scene four times. So it was every scene was just saying the same thing about Modoc, about his he's losing it and he's and it was the same thing every time. So I actually think they did all right with him, but they, yeah, there was just too many, like there was some scenes there that he did not need to be in. It was more to just show his progressively bigger head, but you probably could have saved that and explained it a little later on. Yeah. Um, it does make me think when, when, you know, I like the interrogation where scene with, with Banner and Monica and knowing that she, she's cloning herself at the end and makes you think was the person he was speaking with the same Monica that he knew? Like, do these, do these different Monica's like experience but, different things? So is, is the one like, is the one that he actually was with, was that the original? Like, is that the one that died? Is that one of the ones that are in a tank at the moment? Like, <laughs> Well, my question know. is, the one that they're inter, uh, interviewing or interrogating is, like, on the ship, but then on the next mission, they're being threatened by M- Monica, and it's like, wait a minute, she's supposed to be on the ship, you know, but no one said it. Then it's just like, well, what? How could you not know? Like, you know, she's supposed to be on the ship, but you're just talking to her now on this other place, and she's like, oh, I'm going to do this to you. And um, no well, one they broke. They broke her out of the ship, was. didn't they? Yeah, they broke her out, um, and then just got on the ship and left. But the, the the other thing, so there's the other little post credit scene thingy where um, something shoots out of the the Cree Sentinel um, into the sky, and I think after these, after Hawkeye and uh, what's her name. After the two Hawkeyes come come by and you do their missions in the next few months, uh, I think Captain Marvel is the next. Um, they clearly they mention Captain Marvel because like Cap says on a day to Kamala, like oh, she wanted to be here, but she's she's Off in time. space, she's yeah. doing stuff. Captain Marvel's everywhere in Kamala's room, and then yeah, the the, the whole thing that Captain Marvel has with the, with the connection to the Kree. Uh, that makes me think whatever that shot up into the sky is going to head towards where Captain Marvel is and she'll be the next DLC character to get brought in. I actually think it'll be Black Panther first, but um, yeah, she's coming. Um, right, so that's kind of story beats then. So kind of as a as a final sign off, you know, 60 seconds each. What do we think the next story beat is? I'll I'll start and I think it's nothing to do with what we've seen. I think it's going to go traditional looter shooter route, give us a completely different story thread, send us down that path to figure something out, and then, yeah, six, nine months from now, we'll get the the next part of this story, maybe a year. So, you know, year anniversary is the next part of this story. We'll get given multiple little stories to start threading things together, a la MCU, um, and it'll start building that way. I don't think we're going to see any payoff or progression in the the stories that we've had that that we the story we've had so far for for quite some time. What about you, Chun? Uh, look, I think the next two on the roster is, are a mistake. Uh, you got two archers, one after the other. Um, I have a feeling, and everybody I think out there that knows probably assumes that Black Panther was going to be one of the new reveals, but obviously they probably thought better of that and pushed that back because of mm-hmm. obvious reasons. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I think they'll just have to make do just some boring kind of Earth-based quest on the same maps that we're going to be using constantly until someone new can come in that can make a new stage or a new world part to come in for. I think Wakanda is going to be the next big thing, the big expansion or story part. And um, Black Panther, you know, obviously will come with that. Um, I think that will be when I'll probably think about jumping back into the game proper um, because Black Panther is awesome and I want to play as him in this game. And uh, 
yeah, they'll, they'll, I was disappointed when they delayed it, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's not really a big issue. But yeah, 60 seconds of Wakanda will be it. That'll be the next big thing on the game. Yeah, I don't think it's Black Panther. I don't think the story is heading that way yet. I think you'll be like one of the first, like in first year, he'll be there. But I, I think the next one you'll get, you'll get Clint Barton, you'll get Hawkeye. He will go through, um, like a like a story based mission. It'll kind of end on like a, um, what do you, like, cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Thank you. It'll hang. It'll finish on this kind of cliffhanger, and then Kate Bishop's Hawkeye will kind of start just before that, and then her scene, whatever happens to Barton. Uh, from the trailers that we see makes her go and seek out the Avengers. And then you start playing as all of them again and going through missions and killing time, blah, blah, blah. And then when her story finishes, Hawkeye will be part of it. And then they'll, then they'll move on the story a little bit from that. I don't think that they will, I don't think those two Hawkeyes will progress the story at all. Mm. There will be this basic I mean, side the, the only, thing. The only option they have maybe of progressing the story is um, they, they have said that they want to explore Hawkeye's. Um, did they say they were going to do something about the Ronan character of him? No idea. Or that's where he's been sent away to be? Ooh, that would make sense. Yeah, it sounds like he's like on his own, like yeah, rogue. out, do, out um, doing that kind of part of his character, and that's why she wants to go help him. Um, that'd be interesting, and that could do some things for the story. Um, I'm not too familiar with his time as Ronan from the, the comics. Um, so he, yeah, he's not really affiliated with anything kind of off planet or anything like that, is he? So we'll, we'll see where it goes anyway. Um, that's enough beat about the stories. We've been we've been going on the story stuff for a good nearly hour now. So let's think um, think combat mechanics, kind of core game fundamentals. Um, and we, I think we're going to be able to get through this very quick because I think we've all got the same opinion. Um, I think it's quite woeful. Um, I'm. A massive fan of looter shooters these are my type of games i like grinding gear i like doing all that kind of stuff and powering up characters and if the general gameplay loop um as many people have cited prior to us if you have a solid 30 second loop that you can repeat you will have a successful video game destiny is the example it feels fantastic that's why people play it every day even though there's nothing to do because the feeling of that core loop is fun millions of people play every day that's what you've got to nail you've got to nail that gameplay loop and this game has not done it and it has so many characters to try and do it with to try and entice people to go oh i like playing this character that gameplay loop is solid and i don't think any of them are solid um they're fun in small bursts but none of them are solid enough to make me sit here and go i'm going to grind captain america to level 50 i'm going to grind iron man to level 50 i then want to start gearing my character um and that kind of moves me off the core gameplay to the loot element it's just it's it doesn't need to be there it's pointless it's absolutely pointless um i know that a lot of people were really annoyed by the visual aspects of that you know and not showing visually on your character but i get why it can't because you're trying to sell skins and that you want it to look like the comic it's it's all it's loads of shit piled on top of each other that doesn't need to be there to make this a good game. It could just be a story-driven game that gets DLCs that progress the story. It, it'd work and it'd sell because it's the Avengers and it's the one of the hottest properties in entertainment. It would sell. So it, it feels a bit like somebody's gone, let's make an Avengers game. And then the the purse holders have gone but it needs to be seriously monetizable and we need to nickel and dime everything and it wants to be a live service and it has to be this. So they've built this prototype or this beginning of what is a solid story game and then had to rework the combat and the mission structure to f flow around a, um, a looter shooter. And if done properly, it could have been really good. Um, the problem is this feels to me, I don't know if you've, if you've played much, I know you've played a little bit because we played together, but um, it feels like Warframe mm. that is a free to play game. You have a bajillion different frames that you can master and level up. Um, and the mission structure is the same. It's very similar mission types. You go sabotage something, you capture points or you assault and take out a bunch of enemies. You can complete a mission in Warframe in like two minutes. Um, and you gain some kind of progress and that, 
that game feels better than this. The gameplay loop in that is solid. The movement's fun. It's quick. It's chaotic. Um, there are skills to master. It's fun. I, I've played like 80, 90 hours of Warframe. This, I think I've played 15, like 15, 16 hours. So there's some fundamental issues going on under the hood. And um, the only saving grace for me, as I said, which is why we spent so much time talking about it, is the story. And I'm interested to see where it goes. So that's kind of my my take there. Uh, Dan, I'll let you go go next with yours, um, the gameplay the mechanics. Yeah, it's um, it was weird going into one of these games, which I don't normally play, because uh, I'm used to playing games which are totally focused on one character and building that up. Um, especially this year, coming off like Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us Part Two, like this was a this is a this is like listen we're going to give you a bunch of characters and they're going to be like bare bones and all i could think of as i played through each character is like wow imagine if you could kind of expand each of these characters out and give them dedicated control units rather than having them all have to map the same thing and I, like one of the positives is that each mission you go on does not take that long if they were any longer i'd be like this like it'd be harder to go do a mission, but some of them like you go in and you're done in like five minutes. So I was like, well, it's, it's not as egregious cause I can try and do something else. Um, I just, it, it is a game where you, you just ended up having to beat yourself into submission to, to enjoy one of the characters and just concentrate on that. Like, I, I upgraded gear constantly, but I never read what the gear did. I just watched the the percentage numbers go up, and if I saw all green, I just activated it. I never paid attention. I didn't to any of that. Um, it was weird seeing some of the gear like on Hulk, where it's like, here, here's the chest plate, and then there's, you don't see your chest plate because it's the, the Hulk. Um, but I get it. I think it's a better way to do it. I think it would be crappy if you had to stick with whatever look you wanted. That being said, I got one different look for one of the characters by the end of the story and that was it i didn't earn enough to to buy one at the store or any of that i was like i i i wanted to customize these characters and have that uh cool like pose at one moment towards the end where you they're all walking out together in the, the outfits that you would choose for them but i think only one i think iron man was the only one that had changed because i got the the uh, satellite suit, the space suit was the only one that was, everyone else had the original costume on it because I couldn't even upgrade that because everything just costs ridiculous. My well, and I'd done a lot of the missions, so I don't know how many, how much more I needed to do to be able to get, get them upgraded. But yeah, in terms of my favorites, Iron Man was favorite, followed by four, followed by Kamala and then the other ones. Well, I don't right. think we need to harpen on harpen on that anymore. Then, in terms of forward going of it, um, yeah, it was disappointing from a gameplay perspective. I think that's I think we've kind of sang that. But do you know what? As you um, as you said, Dan, I think uh, in the podcast that we that was gone live today, so last weekend, for reference, um, if it was twenty or thirty bucks for you, or you know, fifteen twenty pound here, it's worth it just to play the story. Um, Kind of clo- closing thoughts from me is I would have done that. I would have spent 15, 20 on the story. I mean, I'm pleased I played it, but um, I think in a year's time, maybe 18 months time, this will be a radically different game and there's a chance that it could be something quite special, but they've got a lot to fix. But um, yeah, in terms of if we're saying to people, did we, I enjoyed my time with it. I'm just not going to go back to it now until there's a meaningful reason to. Chump, what about you? Yeah, final thoughts. Uh, the game came in way too hot. It needed to come out in 2021, I think. Um, Captain America is the most fun game, uh, fun character in the game. I, I unlocked a fair amount of stuff for him, and he just became so much fun. I'm just like knocking my shield around multiple dudes and kicking it back at him and diving through the air and like power bombing him and stuff. Like, I was like, where was this the rest of the game? <laughs> you know, I, the rest of it, I was like, I, I, I can pass on this. But yeah, best best character in the game. Uh, I don't think this game should have been what it is. It should have been more like Ultimate Alliance in this kind of game. Um, 
you can still make a four player co op game and make it a dungeon crawler without any kind of looter shooter aspects in it um, and online crap and random maps that are just all generic. Uh, yeah, 30 bucks. I'm glad you paid for it, Jamie. Uh, I'm going to wait for it on sale to pick it up on Xbox so I can play with my brother. Um, yeah, I'll come back, like I said, when Wakanda comes out, I think. Damn. Yeah, should have been 20 hour story focusing on just one character uh, and a much better experience. Um, yeah, as I said, if I'm putting it on my little ranking, as I said in the podcast, like it, it's fun, you can get enjoyment out of it, but like I can't suggest it to somebody. If someone walked up to me and was like, should I play this? I'll, I'd, even, if you're, even if you're a Marvel fan, um, there's not enough there to... There's not enough there that's different that is that you can get enjoyment from other other properties out of it. Yeah. Um, if this was I'll Justice just League, wait. if this was Justice League, I'd be heavily disappointed <laughs> as a DC fan. Okay. Well, that that wraps up our conversation around Marvel's Avengers. We all played it. You should play it, but just not now. Wait for it to go on sale, basically. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you next Give it time. Well, we'll see you at the weekend for our usual podcast and service to resume um thanks for joining me for the conversation boys and have a good rest of the week